How to YouTube. So right now I'm going to talk about this uh, Coreboot X220 refurbishment job I just did. And as you notice, it has a IPS display. So even the good viewing angles are well visible on camera, which is pretty cool. Anyways, though, I should probably fill you in on a little backstory first. Recently, I've been fixing or refurbishing eBay parts units and then pretty much uh, reselling them. Um, I either use, uh, you know, put core boot or labor boot on them, and I always do the repasting thing. And if it's a model that I can't do that for, um, I typically uh, just put the OEM or similar operating system on it. But recently I got an email for someone that wanted a uh, spec'd out core boot X220, which I thought was going to be a fun build, and some parts of it were fun, and others were uh, slight mistakes. I haven't really done a lot of, uh, I guess, pre-ordering would be the right word. So in order to keep the uh, time frame low, I decided it was a good idea to buy a quote-unquote refurbished X220 off eBay. It was slightly more expensive than a, you know, used or parts unit, but I was hoping I wouldn't have to order parts twice. It would come in a fashion that was at least relatively uh, put together. I would probably have to go through it anyways. There's a lot of people sell things that are refurbished and they don't do the repasting. But it was uh, actually a pretty bad experience. Uh, I luckily ended up getting a partial refund and then went and did all the refurbishing after talking with the seller. So uh, I guess uh, in the photos I decided to uh, disclude uh, any sort of seller information and things like that. Anyways, what was so wrong with the system that on first inspection I decided to try to pursue a refund or return? Well, this is the glorious bent uh, caddy cover and refurbishing job that included uh, screen blotches that weren't in the description and were only visible with uh, brighter colors. And then uh, just general things like it not matching the photographs at all. And the specs were different. Uh, I bought an i5-2540M. So yeah, before uh, proceeding I tested the ports and later ran a stress test. Uh, I ran it for quite a while, so I figure the hardware rather than the screen was relatively okay. From there, um, I started on the repair. First, by cleaning these stickers up. I don't know why they bothered me so much, but that's the first thing I did. So, anyways, uh, with rubbing alcohol, you can take out all the uh, sticker gunk and it looked a little bit better. Okay, now that that's done, let's get into the real repair, starting with uh, the disassembly. So I bought an iFixit kit. Um, quick review would be, uh, it's uh, pretty decent in terms of manufacturing quality, has a lot of bits, uh, not a huge step up from the Cobalt uh, screwdriver, but you only really need two bits to use this for uh, AX220 and, you know, Phillips and uh, some weird bit to remove the VGA screws. I removed the RAM, so I was upgrading it to 16 gigabytes and um, sticky note. Then uh, I actually got into taking out the screws in the bottom case. And on the X220, this is a rather straightforward process, but that little hard drive caddy cover was bothering me. And then I found out. Yeah, there's no uh, rubber uh, side covers on this mechanical hard drive, so uh, if this was a refurbished unit, I would not recommend. So, yeah, you just kind of continuously remove the screws. It's actually a rather quick process. I think this is uh, sped up by 2x, but you can actually disassemble these in around 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so, well, after you get all the screws, uh, you can just flip it over, and, um, 
from there, I for ended up forgetting one in the middle underneath the RAM slot, but after that you can just use the little guitar pick things to uh, remove the keyboard without making any little scratches on it. And the mouse uh, or touchpad should come off with just uh, removing that ribbon cable. So after that, you're kind of inside the X220, and then you just can remove that plastic piece and the screen. So when removing the motherboard, I did mention earlier, you're going to need to remove the uh, VGA screws, and it's a little bit uh, hard to remove that cable. But from there, just need to remove the heatsink and do the repasting. So just a little crisscross pattern there. Don't want to uh, potentially uh, scratch anything or put too much pressure on the chip. And after that, you can find what OEM thermal paste looks like after sitting around since uh, seven years ago, I guess. So I guess that's the uh, entire disassembly. So um, let's uh, get on to reassembly and testing. But first, we need to add new thermal paste. So, I used 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, this is a microfiber cloth, but it's not uh, particularly good at this. So I used the kind of cheaper ones. These ones are supposedly washable to remove the majority of the gunk. And then essentially I go over it with a lens cleaning wipe. And I can actually spend quite a bit of time just redoing this to make everything look perfect. Sometimes up to 30 minutes. I spend way too much time on this. But either way, uh, I typically reuse the thermal pad and then just uh, reassemble. You can use the peanut method on desktops, but uh, when there isn't a heat spreader on the CPU, I typically like getting it as thin as possible with the thermal paste. And a credit card, or at least part of a credit card. So, I halfway reassembled it, and, well, I decided it was good for a test run before I core booted it, and it's booting up the original kind of weird uh, Windows 10 uh, install the eBay seller put on that, but I quickly fixed that with core boot, and later replaced uh, Windows 10 with Debian Mate. Okay, so sorry I don't quite have uh, footage for the reassembly process, but it's uh, pretty much just like the disassembly, but in reverse. Um, well, either way though, now that it's uh, mostly assembled, we just have to, well, Get rid of the old IPS screen and put in a new one that is blemish free. So, there's these little uh, covers for the screws, but after you remove those, there's only two on the bottom. Um, and I would just unscrew that with your uh, normal screwdriver you've been using for the rest of the build. It's still the same bit. And after removing that, the process becomes a little bit more complicated. I would start at the corners first, but you have to remove the plastic screen shroud, I guess. I think that's a good word for it. Um, but either way, though, uh, it is attached with adhesive, and there's some areas that are snapped on, which makes it feel a little bit weird when removing it. But this plastic is less brittle than on some of the older models, so it should be uh, relatively easy to remove. I don't know whether that's uh, due to age or whatnot, but after you got that off, uh, you can start removing the four screws on the side of the screen. And this is actually a relatively easy mod, so if you have like a TN panel and want to switch it over to IPS, you can uh, try doing that. I mean, it's uh, not that expensive, but the parts are relatively uh, pricey for the uh, cost of the laptop. So I think with the discount, I ended up paying like uh, $70, maybe $80 for the X220. And the screen was 50 So I just ended up uh, removing the four screws from the screen, though. 
and purchasing a new IPS panel and the best way to kind of proceed from that is to uh, move the screen a little bit forward and then the lid because you have to be careful about the uh, cable at the back of the screen and when we're moving it these things are kind of fragile so I would take your time with the adhesive and if this was the uh, new panel that was blemish free I'd probably be a little bit more careful about it but either way uh, be careful about removing that cable um, you wouldn't want to uh, destroy your rebuild by destroying a cable and end up having to buy a new part so now that that's over let's get into the assembly okay so even though I glanced over the reassembly of the laptop I am going to show the screen install because uh, these can be a little bit difficult but I ordered a compatible panel that's IPS and they have a list of them on ThinkPad forums uh, I think the cheapest one was uh, fifty dollars that was uh, grade A you want to be careful about panel grades because uh, grade B panel typically means scratches and possible blemishes and it gets worse as the grade goes down but you want something that doesn't have won't come with any stuck pixels or noticeable marks so make sure that they state something like that in the description especially if you're ordering it off eBay and even though you can get these off AliExpress, I would uh, go for a eBay US seller because they're more likely to uh, respond to a complaint and fix the issue in a time where you're not waiting a month between uh, purchasing and when the panel arrives. So let's get into the actual installation. So I put the uh, new panel down on some cloth and carefully inserted the, uh, I guess it's an LVDS cable, back into the monitor. And with um, a little bit of force, I pressed down on the adhesive and then moved it up back into position. I also added a little bit of electrical tape because the old adhesive is probably weakened by the reapplication of the screen. So, from there, you just have to, well, add some screws and you can have the uh, new module just pressed in. So, let's actually take a look at the final product. Now with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a unblemished IPS panel, and about um, a one terabyte solid state drive, a new old stock nine cell battery. It's uh, actually quite a nice system. And um, I guess for a conclusion, uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the rebuild. Sorry, uh, I was lacking on some of the footage. And anyways, uh, I guess if I don't have an upload by the 31st or a live stream, Happy Halloween, and either way, peace, and I hope you have a good one.